Welcome to Mac Voices TV. This is the talk of the Mac community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. And Mac Voices is on the road to Mac World 2010. We are talking to exhibitors, speakers, and friends who are going to be at the show, and we hope you will be joining us. This time around, we are talking to the senior editor from Macworld, our buddy, Mr. Christopher Breen. Chris, it's good to have you. Hey, Chuck. How are you? I'm doing good. This uh, is hopefully a new dimension for us. We haven't done video before, I don't believe. No, and uh, we're taking a risk here because we're doing it all over Skype, and so far, everything's working out really well. But I tried you know, a, a basic setup of this earlier in the day, and... Skype just barfed, and it just said, no, I'm not going to do that, and it destroyed my network, and, uh, and now it's working again. So. Oh, well, well, of course, you just, it was interesting, after we scheduled this, you succeeded in losing power for a full day, turned it into an article, which was very resourceful, but I thought, well, that's just great, we're going to do video, and you just completely wipe things out. No, it, it actually worked out, yeah, I did lose power, and I felt so guilty about not being able to do much of anything. I mean, I had my iPhone, and I'm sort of trying to write an article on that, and I just threw it across the room and said, forget it, we're not going to do that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I had to come up with something, you know, say, well, this is how I spent my day, and so I don't feel like I have to take a personal day because my lights went out. So there good, it was. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Good, good save. Real good save. <laughs> Okay, now before we get to the Macworld stuff, I, there's a question I know that a couple readers have sent in that I need to ask you, and that is um, if it's true that you are uh, a cousin of Conan O'Brien. No. No? Because they, no. Seem to, they seem to see some similarity in the hair. Not the color, but just the, the overall flip and style. Oh, well, I, and actually, and the tall head. And the so tall. I think both, both Conan and I share a large brow, all the better to pack brains into. And, uh, yeah, and we have that hair that kind of, a, and I think it's, uh, it's the Irish, I think. They're, I think there's an Irish flip that, uh, that runs through some families, and I've managed to get it. I see. Okay. So, so you won't be taking the 10 o'clock time slot on NBC? No, I'd be willing to take the buyout, even a tenth of the buyout just not to be on NBC because I yeah. think that would be uh, lovely. Yeah, you and me both. You and me both. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Macworld 2010, here we go again. And it's no big surprise that you are back uh, doing, uh, as the schedule reads right now, a couple official sessions. I'm sure there'll be one or two other things along the way. What do you have in store for us this time? Uh, once again, Ben Long and I will be doing our iPhone super session with all new material and not all new material, but some new material and some old stuff. Uh, this is a two-hour session. We're doing it on Thursday the 11th from 1 to 3. And this is for people who have an iPhone and they're accustomed to using it. They don't, you know, don't go in there and say, how do I turn this on? Because that's not the session for you. <laughs> and we have had people doing that. And we say, well, just sit next to somebody who knows and they'll show you how to turn it on. But we do things like data management, um, better ways of navigating the device, uh, some cool tools that you can use. Uh, we, we'll talk about jailbreaking, too, because there are people that want to jailbreak their phones and what the advantages are, what the dangers are of it. We'll talk about unlocking, because we can. Um, and that kind of – oh, and media management as well. Okay. That, sound, that sounds good. That sounds good. Um, you say it's not a basic session. What is becoming, I think, more interesting as the iPhone matures, it is honestly getting more sophisticated. You think you know everything, and then you read an article or see a tip by somebody like you where you know, if, if you tap the home button, it does this, and if you slide something sideways, it does that. A lot of the, the typical tips and tricks that we're also used to seeing in the Mac are creeping into the iPhone. Is that a good thing? Yeah, I think it is. Um, you know, when it, Apple tries to present these things as if, look, all you have to do is this and the entire world opens to you. And that's not the case. Yes, it can do a lot of things very easily, but there are certain other things that are a little confounding to people. Um, for example, if you're an enterprise network, it now supports enterprise kind of connectivity. But a lot of people say, great, well, I've got this iPhone and I've got this IT person and I don't know how to talk to the two of them to make them work together because, you know, IT will say no unless you give them a dozen donuts. So um, we will talk about, you know, how to approach IT, how to tell them to configure this thing. If you need to get on a VPN, how do you do this? There's a lot of hidden power in these things beyond what Apple tells you about. So hopefully what we do is we present some of that material so that you walk in there and say, yeah, I know 
I know everything that you need to know about an iPhone. And then you walk out two hours later going, you know, actually I didn't. And this stuff has been helpful. So this is a session for someone who is familiar with their iPhone, is not a rank beginner, but hasn't gone down the jailbreaking road, hasn't downloaded six screens of apps or anything like that, or is well, it, it's it's some of both because we've actually had um, when we've have done the session in the past, we've had jailbreakers in there, and we've had people that are pretty advanced on their phone, and. Even they will, you know, there are areas that some people don't explore. You know, they're all over the jailbreaking stuff, but they're not really all over their media uh, handling or text handling. Or we talk about uh, third-party apps that we think are really cool, and maybe they go, oh, that's great. I haven't seen this because it wasn't in Apple's top 25 on the App Store. So I think there's something in it for everybody. Plus, we try to have a conversation with people in the audience. So if there's a jailbreaker in there or somebody else who's very advanced and says, you know, there's another way to do this, we don't say, shut up, you know, because <laughs> we're in charge here. You get out of here. Uh, we learn stuff as we go along with this, too. So it's, uh, it works out well for everyone. And again, that's, that's the beauty of it. There's becoming so much to learn that someone who is intensely interested in, I don't know, uh, Games is always the the, the big mm. example. You know, what's the best game or what's the best Space Invaders game? And you think you know, and then somebody says, no, this one just came out two hours ago. Oh, well, right. okay. You know, yeah, so. and, and we're not going to try to just sit there and give a long list of cool third-party apps because you can get a list like that anywhere. But it will certainly be part of it. And a lot of it, this is about productivity for us as well. You're in Europe and you want to do X and you can't because you don't want to pay AT&T for it. So how do you do that? And we'll talk about that kind of thing as well. Chris, I, I'm intrigued by the fact that you're going to include jailbreaking and unlocking. Yeah. And we don't want to go down that road too far. But what are your thoughts on why you're doing that? Is it just because it's such a popular topic and this is a Macworld audience? Or do you think it's important enough to start letting the general public know about? I, I think it is important. And we don't feel that we need to censor ourselves because you know, AT&T or Apple may not care for us to talk about it. I mean, the fact is... You paid a lot of money for this thing. You're paying for a contract. It's not like you can get an iPhone now without paying for a contract, at least not in the U.S. So you're paying your, your pound of flesh to AT&T. We figure if you want to make your uh, phone a little more capable, particularly if you're traveling overseas and you don't want to pay roaming charges, that's perfectly okay. We certainly warn people about the effects it can have, um, the moral consequences. Um, unlike ripping a DVD from Netflix, you won't go to hell for doing this. But uh, <laughs> there are areas of purgatory we yeah, possibly. Just get a little um, toasty is what you're saying. Get, uh, your feet will get a little warm, yeah. and you may be there a really long time, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, no, it's, uh, we believe it's your phone. You can do what you want with it. Um, if you choose to unlock it, there are dangers to it, and there are, there are pluses to it as well. So we're more than happy to talk about that stuff. That's good. And I didn't get the sen session, or excuse me, I didn't get the sense that you were censoring anything. I just thought it was an interesting choice to include in a session like this. If it's a super <laughs> session, it probably should, but it's just one of those things that doesn't seem to be quite on the radar as much as it used to be, at least the, at least the jailbreaking yeah. part. Yeah, I, I, I do think there are people that stay away from topics because they think, oh, well, Apple wouldn't like this. Well, Apple's not going to be there, so do that. <laughs> yeah, good point. So that's the first session, uh, the, the iPhone Super session, but you're also doing, according to the schedule, an Ask the Editor session as well. Yeah, that's going to be on Friday from 5 p.m. to 6.15, I believe, and I will be there, Jason Snell from Macworld, Dan Frakes, Rob Griffiths, and Dan Morin. And we did this for the first time last year, and it was really a lot of fun. It was really the bunch of us walk into a room, other people are there who are readers of the website or the magazine or both, and they ask us questions about, and it, sometimes it's a very pundity kind of thing where we'll talk about Apple and what they're up to. Other times it'll be about how we choose stories for the magazine or the website or why we've written about this or how we're completely wrong about that. Um, and it's just a nice way for us to have a conversation with people who read and enjoy what we do or hate what we do. They can come to it. it uh, I would think this, even though this is a Mac audience, um, this presents some challenges for you because that means anyone can throw you just anything they want and uh, put you on the spot if they want to. Sure. Yeah. I mean, they're welcome to it. If it gets personal, 
you know, uh, we'll have a problem. We'll have to call the goons in and uh, and mess you up. But, uh, you know, as long as you keep it on a professional business level, you may get heated about that. But, uh, you know, for example, if you criticize my hair, there's going to be trouble. The fact that you have the goons waiting disturbs me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got to take these kind of precautions. You know, we're, we're a valuable property to IDG, and, and we need to be protected from our fans. Chris, you know, you are a valuable property, and, and I'm serious about this. And things are evolving so fast uh, in, the, in the print media world, in the online media world. Macworld seems to have been one of the properties that has navigated the waters probably a little better than others, sort of migrating mm -hmm. a lot of content, and yet not losing the impact of the, the print magazine completely because of what, they, what you, what they decide to put in print versus what you put on the web and how you tie it all together. Yeah, I, I will give Jason Snell all the credit for that. Um, he saw this coming a long time ago. And as he rose through the ranks, he had more and more influence on this. And now he's the editorial director. And I'm not just sucking up to the boss, but truly he gets it. And he's gotten it for a long time. And so even where other IDG publications have moved more slowly to the web than we have, Jason made sure a long time ago we really started putting a lot of effort into that. And, and it's really paid off. I think it's... The company, you know, the, the big company believes we're doing well with that strategy, and we're very happy with it. And you've also adapted the podcast model. You've adopted the video model, model with both the Macworld podcast and the Macworld video. Um, right. You, you just, you don't dive in completely, but you, you touch sort of everything, and you know where you play, and you play very well in that space. Well, and some of the stuff we've been doing for a while, the videos, for example, uh, that started when we were bundling videos with CDs. David Pogue started it when he was a, a Macworld writer. And then I carried on doing something called Breen's Bungalow years after that. So when it came time that people were doing these video podcasts, we said, oh, well, we already do those. We've just been putting them on CD. Now we'll put them on the web. And that gave us kind of a jump on, on some other people because this was something that was old hat to us. It was just a, a different place to present that material. And we've been doing radio stuff and, and online chats for quite a long time. So, again, it's like, oh, now we're calling that a podcast. Fine, let's, let's put it out there as a podcast. So, you know, it's, it's kind of the same old stuff. It's just you have a new arena for presenting it. Distributing videos on a CD. What a quaint idea. <laughs> it was great. Well, at least it wasn't on a floppy disk, you know. Yeah. <laughs> You sure there wasn't a floppy disk version at one point? You know, I'll have to ask Pogue if, if they did if ever did anything with a floppy. But no, I think it went on CD. And at that point, it was this huge deal. You know, it's like, wow, a video on, you know, and the quality of the video was not great uh, because, you know, the resolution was like, I don't know, 240 by 180 or something, you know, but I remember making these little tiny videos and you know, I remember they were fun to make, but they were, they were very small. Well, yeah, you and you were kind enough to give me uh, permission to distribute through the Mug Center a higher quality yeah. version to Mac user groups for showing at their meetings, and that was the only place you could get those. And even those were small. Yeah, I think those were three twenty by two forty. <laughs> we may have gotten to six forty by forty at one point, but now we're doing HD, and we're uh, we don't present the HD versions on the website, but we have a YouTube channel, so you can go there and see the HD version of it, and they look spectacular. So we're we're making strides. Yeah, yeah. It's a fun world. Yeah. Anything else going on uh, from your participation standpoint at Macworld 2010? Uh, let's see. I may, be, I may be speaking to a users group there. I'm not sure. Uh, if not, I'm just going to be chatting to people. I'm actually going to be running uh, at the Macworld. Booth, we're going to be having podcasts and video podcast done. Um, I'm coordinating that stuff, so I'll be doing some of those. And we'll be high atop the Macworld Pavilion again. again. Uh, unlike last year, we're not going to have a, um, an enclosed space. We're just going to be out in the open. So that'll be interesting depending on how loud it is around us. Um, and then there's the Cirque to Mac party that I'll be playing with the Macworld All-Star Band on Thursday night. It'll be in the same venue as it was last year, for those who know. And, uh, and that's always a huge kick in the pants, so I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, that's, that was a great time last year, and I know it's going to be another one this year. And, and it's be, I've said it before, it's because there's no agenda to that party. Yeah. It's just uh, you guys get together once a year. You, you create the, the Macworld All-Star Band out of uh, just that once-a-year appearance, and it's just a lot of fun. And I just hope you 
are half as good as you were last year because last year you were amazing on a few things. I, I think we will be at least half as good. Well, That's no, I, where we kind of set our set our sights. <laughs> yeah, but no, I meant you personally. I mean you. Oh, me personally. You personally, yeah. really? No, I'm good. only going to be I'm only going to be a quarter as good. Just go. <laughs> uh, if I can hit the last note on whipping post, I'll be a happy guy. I hit it last year, and that was yeah. the first time I ever have. I mean, in rehearsal, I sing it down like two octaves because I'm saving myself for that one note. It's a high C, which is about I don't know a fifth or a sixth out of my range. Um, but I was inspired by Guinness, probably, to uh, <laughs> squeak it out. Uh, and also backing way off the mic, which helps. Um, so that's my goal, is to hit that note. And if, even if we do the song, I'm not quite sure we're going to do it. Well, that's the one I was thinking about, because if it's too bad we didn't have like a super wide-angle camera, because you hit that note, and everybody in the band went... <laughs> <laughs> like, like, oh my God! Where did no? Because we all wondered if it was going to happen, and I did too. I never know until it's actually, you know, I'm going to try to hit it. And yeah, everybody looked at me like, "Dude, you did it!" Yeah, yeah. And I was, and from then on, I didn't care what else I did. It was like I think we closed the first set with it, and I was a happy guy. So, yeah, I, look at that! I did it. It may never happen again. It's going to be another great show. I'm I'm glad that the uh, the All Star Band is going to be playing, and I'm glad you're doing yeah. a couple sessions. And all we we know that all we'll have to do is look up, and there will be Chris uh, atop the MacWorld booth. Uh, yeah, or I'll be somewhere else. But yes, yeah, do, do look up there because there are going to be people up there, and I'm sure we'll wave, you know, in sort of that parade style wave, <laughs> throw rose petals or something down upon the rose petals. <laughs> uh, we'll see what we can get. Training future Miss Americas with that wave, Chris. That I, I'm, I'm working on it, yeah. yeah. It's my second career is training people for the Rose Parade. Uh, anything else going on in your world we should know about before we uh, close up shop? Gosh, I don't think so. Um, like everyone, I'm you know, anxiously awaiting a device coming from Apple next week. Um, we'll see what that is. But, uh, yeah, that's going to give all of us a lot to uh, to think about and do for the next who knows how long? Um, you know, the iPhone was had a huge impact on all of us. So I think this next thing probably will too, if not a greater impact. You know, there's a terrible temptation to start speculating, and at this point, it's, oh, let's do it. <laughs> you, do you want? If you want to, go ahead. I'm I'm almost burned out because at this point, yeah. what else? What else can it be? Can they claim it can do? I mean, yeah. Short of teleportation, I've seen everything. Yeah, well, it will do that. Oh, oh, good. Okay. And pudding, a lot of pudding involved. <laughs> Teleportation and pudding—that's that's a new combination for. Yeah, no, I, you know, honestly, I don't, I don't care so much about the physical device, which I think a lot of people are focusing on. I really care about what it's going to do to change publishing and change the world, um, much as the iPod did and much as as the iPhone did. So, yes, it'll be cool to see what Steve whips out or whoever whips out. But um, far more interesting is, you know, a year from now or a year and a half from now, what's the world going to look like because of this thing. You know, it's a very grandiose statement to say that a product is going to potentially change the world. But when you look at what the iPod did, when you look at what the mm -hmm. iPhone is doing right now, it's, it's a pretty fair statement that there's a, a, a good possibility that that's what will happen here. Yeah, I mean, not in, not in the grand sense, you know, that, that suddenly we're all going to sprout um, antlers or something. But, you know, within these these worlds, and particularly the ones that I'm interested in, you're interested in, um, it, it probably will have a profound change. I mean, and people expect that from Apple now. And um, and so, you know, I'm intrigued by that idea of how this is all going to play out and sort of the tentacles that go off this device, that it's more than just about publishing or media, that, that it's also about finances and it's all about location and finances and about advertising and shopping and, you know, something that, that has this long tail that spreads out into other areas. I would imagine we'll be back talking about this reasonably yeah. soon afterwards, uh, if not at the, at the show. So. It could very well be at the show, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, hey, I will see you in San Francisco. I hope we'll see all the listeners in San Francisco, and uh, I'm going to encourage them to come to the Ask the Editor's question and not mention your hair. Not mention my hair and keep it, uh, keep it on a kind of a business level. Because, again, you know, those two guys by the door, and actually we're going to have some plants in the audience too. So that person behind you that, who looks meek and weak, 
uh, could very well be you know a ninja. <laughs> A ninja. You guys spared no expense. No, you know, because we have to have kind of the secret stormtroopers in there, too. So, you know, keep it uh, keep it pleasant. You can disagree, but just uh, keep it kind of there. Bouncers, ninjas, stormtroopers. Okay. that's, uh, that's Yeah, we've got it all, really. You know, that's, yeah. that's the kind of outfit we are. I'm impressed. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, that's Chris Breen. He is the senior editor at Mac. World. He will also be doing the iPhone Super Session and participating in Ask the Editors, uh, meaning, of course, the folks at Macworld. All of this at Macworld 2010, and that's just a couple sessions out of a whole lot. So stop back uh, as we continue down the road to Expo and we talk to everyone. Please visit the, visit the Mac Voices TV website for links to everything, links to Chris's sessions, links to follow him on Twitter, to follow me on Twitter and to our brand new iPhone app so that you can put everything that we do right in your hip pocket. Until the next time, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices TV. Thanks for watching. Mac Voices TV is part of the Mac Voices Group and a member of Mac Level 10. 